praise you. Oh, Father, we worship you. We bless your holy name today, oh God. Father, we thank you for this day, this day, this hour. That is the dawn of a new day. Lord, we just declare good morning to you. Good morning to us. Good morning to each other. Because this is the dawn of the new day where the sun of righteousness arises with healings in his wings, oh God. And we ask you, oh Father, to have your way. Minister life to us. Release your word to us, oh God. As we worship you, as we praise you, as we put you first place, oh Lord, God, that your hand would come into this place for this entire week, oh God, that you would impact the people's lives, that they were, that we open up to your move, to your presence, to your will, to your purpose, oh God, that Lord, in this last hour that we are living in, oh God, that there will be a mighty wave of your presence, a mighty wave of your spirit, oh God, that Jesus Christ will be revealed in this hour in which we now live, oh God. Let your spirit reign. Let your spirit pour out. Let your mighty power, oh God, come upon your people, I pray. Let your people know who you are that they may reveal you unto this world oh god oh we pray in glory. the name of the lord jesus father glory. pour out your spirit master you shall not forsake your people you shall not forsake your word glory. you shall not forsake your will your desire your purpose for your end time people oh god we ask you in the name of jesus forget not your people lord forget not your ministers of the Glory. gospel forget not your children oh god no matter the darkness light shines in a dark hour Glory. in a dark place and light always wins Glory. So we give you glory and honor and we declare that we are on the winning side. Glory. That light always wins Hallelujah. over darkness and we stand with the light of God. We declare the light of God and in this whole week, almighty oh God, that the glory of the Lord shall come glory. upon your people like we have not yet seen, Master. And glory. for that, we are so grateful to you. We ask you, Lord, have your way. Do what you want to do. We thank you again already for signs, wonders, and miracles. We thank you for the supernatural being poured out in the natural realm. God, that the natural realm is overshadowed by the supernatural realm. Thank you for angelic visitations. Thank you that the word becoming flesh and dwelling among us, that the word of God comes off the pages and into our own lives. We see the word of God come to life in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We ask you, we thank you because it is your will, it is your desire, Hey, and we are a part of your will and a part of your desire we are a piece of the entire puzzle and we give you thanks oh God that you would give us an opportunity to be a piece of the entire puzzle for what you are putting together in this very hour and for that we give you glory honor and true thankfulness oh God from grateful hearts that you have not forgot your people you have not forgot what you want to do in this hour but you are restoring back that that was lost that what that was faded away that that had dissipated you are restoring back to the hungry hearts to the thirsty souls you're restoring back the encounters of the Almighty God with his people and that is what we desire in this week, in this entire season that you have put faithful life into. That there shall be an encounter with God through your hand encountering your people. By the men of God that come into this place. And just by the hunger of the people. Hungry and thirsty to see you and walk with you like days of old. And for that we are thankful that you are already doing somebody say amen y'all agree with that prayer amen. 
Amen. It's, I wasn't going to pray that, but it just jumped out of my spirit. So I just had to open up and let it jump out. Amen. Say, let it out. Let it out. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, we just want to welcome Evangelist Rick Ross, my, hey, <laughs> my, uh, man, I want to tell you, he's a friend of mine, right? Is that okay to say you're, you're not just a brother, but you are a friend in, in the gospel and an awesome, awesome man of God. I, I got a chance to go spend a little time in Temple, Texas with him, and uh, he had already, you know, uh, how you say, he boiled the potatoes. And all I did was just go there and help begin to mash. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. We were going to serve up something for the Lord, but he worked it out. Amen. So it's an honor to have you here. And we just, today's the opening day, 12 noon. So um, we want to open up in faith and, and uh, just trust the Lord. He's going to do what he said he's going to do. Amen. And he's doing it. Amen. So those of you that are here and, and those of you that see this later, we bless you because we're not going to live stream this. Only at nighttime we're going to live stream. But in the daytime, it's personal, amen? So it is on video that we were recorded. So whatever God has to say, just let it go, amen? Why don't you stand to your feet? Let's welcome Evangelist Rick Ross and his wife, Sherry, and their daughter. Come on. We got an extension to the family. Welcome. We want to welcome you, amen? Come on, Evangelist Rick Ross. God bless you, sir. Thank you, Apostle. Let's give the Lord a hand clap, amen? Apostle Nathan, Pastor Cindy, I'm so glad to be back in Faith Alive Church. I honor you guys. You guys. Can I say that? And I honor you, Apostle. This house is carrying a, a mandate. You can be seated. It's a mandate from God. You know, I really didn't know how serious it really was until I broke away and, and the Lord began to show me how serious it was. It's a season with God. It's a time. Amen? Amen. And what's been preached from this pulpit is coming from the throne room of heaven. What's been taught is coming from the throne room of heaven. But I want to say to you, Apostle Nathan, yes. I honor you, man of God. And I honor you, Pastor Cindy. And I honor the leaders in this church. And I thank you for allowing me to come back and take my liberty. Amen. Can we give the Lord a hand clap? I, I come with something heavy on, on me. It's a deep river. And I said, Lord, do I release this here? He said, yes, they're swimming deep. Already knew that, but I just wanted to hear it one more time. You know, there's some places you go, you can't just release this because they can't grab it. They're not ready. The foundation is not ready. Amen? It's just not ready. And so, let's give Moses a hand for him. Come on. Give him a hand clap. Amen? So I came, I, I came this week, this weekend to put something on the plate. I said, I come put something on the plate. I don't know about you, but when I get ready for a steak in the natural, I want to see a good steak. I want to see a thick steak. Well, let's flip that to the spiritual side and the Word of God. I don't know about, I know that you, you, that you want to eat something on the plate. Amen? And so I come to put something on the plate this weekend. Come on, Amen? You have to put something on the plate. Touch your name and say you have to put something on the plate. And so this is supposed to be a, a glory conference. And I don't know about you, but I know about Apostle Nathan. He's all about the glory and about the revelation of God. And, and so I was born in the glory in 2000. And I was like, I've been chasing this glory thing for a long, for 18 years now. And there's many levels to God's presence. When I say glory, I'm talking about His presence. Amen? 
How many know that God uses some men to shift things in the earth? Shifts the heavens and it shifts the earth. There are men that's walking in this earth today that will shift earth and heaven at the same time. It's because of the mandate that's on their life. Apostle Nathan, that's what's on you. You're shifting the region. You're shifting the region. Let's give the Lord a hand clap. The region is shifting. Amen? When I say region, I'm talking about people too. When the region is shifted, it's, we're, we're talking about people. Amen? It's always been about people. So today, I just want to touch you. How, many, how long do I got? I hope you're awake this morning, today. It's afternoon. You are. Amen. I feel the glory, man. Just talk about it and it comes, huh? Thank you, Lord. Just raise your hands in the glory. It's here. <laughs> Thank you for your glory, Lord. Thank you for your presence. I honor you, Lord, when you shift the room. When the atmosphere shifts, I honor you, Holy Spirit. <laughs> Get them all through the building today, Lord. <laughs> oh. Glory, glory. God, you're going to help me here. I don't know if they're video on, but if they are, I just want to say the glory just hit here <laughs> into a greater realm. <laughs> we honor you, Holy Ghost. Okay. Go to First Corinthians. <laughs> Oh, before we go there, oh wait, go to go to John one. More Lord, just get them, whack them, Holy Ghost, whack them. Just whack Cindy back there as she walks, Pastor Cindy as she walks to the doors. Just whack her. <laughs> So when we talk about glory, and I'm going to teach today, I'm not going to preach. Amen? I may know there's a difference. So if I'm teaching and I break out and preaching that, I guess that's the Holy Ghost, I don't know. No, I know it is. So when we talk about glory, God was clothed in glory, was He not? He's all glory. So when you look at your Father in, in heaven and when you, you look upon Him, He is clothed in glory. He's, all, he's wrapped in glory. Amen? I, I, I'm not going into my teaching just yet. I'm going to talk about glory just for a second. He's wrapped in it. Jesus did not come that we would go to church. Remember, your father's wrapped in glory, but Jesus didn't come to earth so that we could just go to church. Amen? Let me say it that way. 
He came. He came so that we <laughs> could be clothed in glory and be his disciples. So I want to go real slow today because I'm not going to go in a hurry because we're going to get into some deep waters here in a minute. Understand, your father is clothed in glory. And you are clothed in glory. And there's glory in you. Because you're the light, ain't it? So if there's light, there's glory. Is that what you've been saying? And so Jesus, when he came, he didn't come talk about church. But he came to talk about kingdom. So Adam and Eve, when they were in the garden, when Jesus come talk about kingdom... He wanted to raise sons in glory. Are you with me? Are you here? As Apostle Nathan would say. So, Jesus, so, so when Jesus came, he came to talk about the kingdom to raise sons in the glory. Because he was a reflection of his father. Are you with me? So Adam, getting back into Genesis, Adam and Eve was clothed in glory. That's all they knew. Amen? That's all they knew. But something happened and they lost their mind, so to speak. Amen? I'm hesitating for a reason because I want you to follow me today. And so when they fell in the garden, the second Adam had to come, right? So go to John 1, 14. And what's it say? And the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Who was that? And we beheld his glory. The glory as of one, as of the only begotten of the Father. Full of grace and truth. And the word became flesh. And dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory. And the glory of the only begotten father. So he was a reflection of his father. Jesus beheld the, the father's glory. Is that what you see? Huh? You see that? So go to Hebrews 2.10. So as Jesus beheld his Father's glory, let's just go to 2.10. And I'm going to do a slow teaching here because I, I don't want you to miss a thing. Are you there? And 2.10, for it, is, it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and be whom all things, and bring in many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. I want to zero in, for it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, by whom all things, say all things, bring in what? He wants to bring, that's what's on his mind. He wants to bring many sons to glory. He wants his people to shine like, he, the Father God wants you to shine like he does in the earth. Just as Jesus did. Amen? Say, just as Jesus did. So he didn't come to build a church, but he come to make disciples. And not only that, but raise many sons and daughters in glory. Say we're joint heirs. So if I'm joint heirs with something, then I'm, joint, I'm connected to it. So I'm connected to the glory. So when Jesus came, He came with one thing on His mind, to save people, but not only that, but when they come into the kingdom of God, He wanted to be a reflection of the kingdom. 
This church is a reflection of the kingdom. Are you sons and daughters? Then you're in glory. Glory is in you. Are you with me? So what did Jesus come? He come to raise many sons and daughters. I'll just put the daughters in there. He just said many sons. So understanding what Jesus did, he came into the earth to shift it. But some folk didn't want to shift with him. Is that right? Say the religious of that day didn't want to shift with him. And he stood on the perimeter talking about what he was doing. Because they really didn't understand what he was all about. Just, well, I'm going to go slow because we're going in, we're fixing to dive into something. Are you with me? And, and so they didn't understand what he was about when he walked the earth. Are you walking the earth? Sure you are. And there's a reflection of heaven on you. And so the religious people of that day didn't understand, just like the religious people of this day don't understand about faith for life. What's that church about? Why are they having all them services? And I'm talking about people that go to church. They're locked down in tradition. When Jesus came, when all of his glory... Because he had the reflection of his father. His father is all glory. And he was the reflection of his father. So are you. And so when he came, they didn't really understand what he was trying to say and what he was trying to get to. Just like the people in today around here. They don't understand faithful life and why you're having all these meetings. Because you've got religious churches all around us capped down. And now you've got an apostolic church here that's going and swimming in a deep river spiritually. And it's shifting things in the natural and they're getting a little scared. Just like the religious people of that day. Amen. So what they're really seeing is glory. A glory river flowing out of this church. Come on. Understand it flows out of here it flows out of you. Are you with me? So that's just the introduction of glory a little bit. Understanding Jesus was a reflection of his Father, and you're a reflection of Jesus. Are you with me? 1 Corinthians 2. Say many sons. He wants to raise many sons. What's Apostle Nathan doing and Pastor Cindy doing here? What are they doing? They're raising many sons and daughters, are they not? But they're not only raising them up to be religious, he's raising them up in glory. <laughs> Hebrews 2.10. He's raising them up in glory. Pastor Cindy, you're raising your children, not spiritually children, up in glory. Because the kingdom's all about glory. It's all about the king. And when it becomes about him and you put your reflection on him, then all, everything he has comes back on you. That's the reason some folk can walk in a place and step to the pulpit and people bust out laughing. Because it's glory. <laughs> all right. Y'all ready to dive off, I can tell. Get, Tiffany, open up that water bottle for me. Thank you. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 6. Thank you. However, this is verse 6. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age. Nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to nothing. Say so they're coming to nothing. But we speak, say we speak the wisdom of God in a ministry. Are you with me? 
the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages. For whose glory? Say our glory. I don't know about you as I do research since last year in this text. I don't find it. I don't think I found it but one other place about our glory. Say it's my glory. But it's hidden. I'm fixing to break something open all afternoon here. <laughs> Lord, you're going to help me get through this. Don't let me get drunk. <laughs> So let's look at this. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Touch your neighbor and say you got to speak it. See, it's hidden. Hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. See, God has, he has wisdom. It's hidden. It's in a mystery. But we got to speak it to get it out. Are you with me? Huh? He has wisdom, but it must be spoken. It is for your glory. Say your glory. It's for your next level. It's from your next level, from glory to glory. Did he not say? Hmm? Okay. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written. What's written? I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into a heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Say the eye has not seen. So in other words, this hidden, 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 hidden wisdom that God has is for our glory. And it's a mystery. But when he gives it to you, when you speak it in the Holy Ghost and it's revealed, the mystery is unlocked. And now the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard what he shows you. Are you with me? Now, if you're not with me, I want you to, to, to wave at me because I don't want you to miss something because we got a lot of material to cover. I don't know if I'll even get to cover it all. Say it's hidden. But we have to speak it out. Say God's got it hidden for us. But we got to speak it out. And that's when the mystery is unlocked. Because the eye has not seen what God's about to show the church right now. That's the reason the prophets have got to come forth. You see, I want to stop here for a minute and drive a stake. That's the reason people are coming in this church, Apostle Nathan, because there's a stake been driven into this, into this ground spiritually. And now God says, okay, now I'm bringing them in to lay another log on the fire with you. And now what you have broken open already, we're coming next to you and break it on out some more. Amen. The tent specked pegs are going to be stretched on out some more. Because God's got people in this region that are bound with drugs. Okay, this is just a side note. It's bound with drugs and alcohol. And the jumping, jumping jimmies are coming back, amen? Freaky Freddy's coming back to the church. What am I saying? There's people out there around this church and around this region that are bound with drugs and alcohol. Right, just right over there, they're ate up with drugs. That's the reason, Apostle Nathan, that this church is here. That's the reason it's in glory. That's the reason it's in the glory river. That's the reason the glory is, is flowing. Now God's about to unlock. Are you ready? The mystery. So you can see what you haven't seen before. You've seen a lot. And God says, now I'm coming in sending people with you into here with Apostle Nathan and Pastor Cindy. Now we're going to break this thing up because you, where I could give you wisdom to see. And when you see, it's going to be a mystery that I unlock to you how to handle the drug cartel, the drug people here. Did I say drug cartels? Because you need to have wisdom how to deal with it. Because it's a mystery right now to how to unlock it. But God's going to unlock it. Are you with me? (laughs) Say he has wisdom. 
It must be spoken. And it's for your glory. And it's for the next level. And you're going from glory to glory. Let me get back in my teaching. Let's go down to verse. Let's start with eight. Which none of the rulers of this age knew, for they had known they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. But it is written. Say it's written. Then he's about to unlock the mystery. The wisdom. When wisdom comes, the mystery gets unlocked. I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the man, heart of a man, the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Faithful life church loves him. Verse 10. But God, say but God, has revealed them to us through his what? For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man, which is in him? Say it's in him. Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Now we have received, say we have received, not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. <laughs> I love mentors. We, must, we need mentors. We need men of God in our life. But there are some things you will have to get on your own. Watch this. Why did I say that? Look here. Verse 10. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So when you give your life to Jesus, there was a, there, the Spirit of God came to live with you. Amen? Your spirit was dead, but now when the Spirit of the living God came, it woke up. Are you with me? Not only that, wisdom came with it and the mystery came with it. Now we pray it out in the Holy Ghost. Amen. You got to speak it. Come on, let's pray in the Holy Ghost for a minute. See, that's a mystery. And God's going to reveal that. He's going to reveal the wisdom. Amen. There's some things you won't get until you pray it out. Amen. We got great men of God that's teaching, teaching us and preaching to us. And that's good. We need that. But there are some things to get you to the next level you have to get for yourself. Amen. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit, say through His Spirit, for the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. So your Spirit, so when I pray in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost already knows what the mystery is, and He converts it to our spirit. He taps into our spirit. Amen. Are you there? And so the Holy Ghost knows the deep things of God, and so when I pray... <laughs> And when you pray, you're searching for the deeper thing of God and God. And now the Holy Spirit connects to your spirit. And now he's tapped into you. Now you're hearing things and seeing things you've never seen before. Because it goes back to, to verse 9. The eye has not seen. The ear has not heard. The things that God has prepared for you. Understanding one thing. When you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Ghost came to talk to your spirit. And when he came, he came with the mystery of the kingdom. But now he's ready to unlock more of it. Uh, amen. He's going to unlock wisdom, so you got to speak it. I don't want to lose you. you got to speak the wisdom. Is that not what your Bible says? And then what did it say then? I'm going to go back up and recap just for a minute. What's it? Because this is pretty deep. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. So what are we speaking? you got to speak. Amen. So when you pray in the Holy Ghost, He's going to unlock you. He's going to unlock things. He wants to take you to a new level. Say it's time. Touch your neighbor. Say it's time to go to new levels. Say it's deep things. The deep things of God. For a man knows the things. Okay, let's look at verse 11. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man. Is that not right? Which is in him. You understand that? Well, watch it. But the spirit. Where, hang on. Where was that, 11? 
For even now thou knowest the things of a... Of, let's go back to him. Let's go back and read the whole thing. For God revealed to him us through his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of a man which is in him. So even so, no one knows, say no one knows, the things of God except the Spirit of God. So God wants to communicate with the Holy Ghost to your spirit to unlock you. Come on, are you with me? There's some things that's been unlocked, but He hasn't unlocked everything. And we're the generation that He's about to unlock some stuff from the portals of heaven that we haven't heard because it goes back to where the eye has not seen. The ear has not heard. Are you with me? So now, verse 12, for now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God. That's what you received when you got saved. Say amen. amen. That we might know the things that have been freely given to us by who? Freely given. There's things that you haven't tapped into with God yet. We ain't even scratched the surface. Come on. There's things. But when he taps you like he's about to tap you, the mystery is about to be unlocked. And now we're going places where we've never been and we're seeing things we've never seen and we're hearing things we never heard. So the Holy Ghost is about to tap you all the way. Come on. That's the reason it's important to pray in the Holy Ghost. Bill Hammond wrote a book not too long ago. Well, it's been a few years back. Prophet Bill Hammond wrote a book about 70 reasons why you should pray in the Holy Ghost. And some people made fun of it, but I'm going to tell you something. The ones that's making fun of him ain't going nowhere, but the one, the, he, the one that Bill Hammond wrote it, and he's going, he's blowing and going, his ministry is. He must know something. Because the Spirit of the Holy Ghost wants to communicate with your spirit. He doesn't communicate with your mind. He communicates with your spirit. And it's the deep things of God. See, nobody wants to go deep anymore. Nobody wants to speak anything. You got to put something on the plate. <laughs> you got to put something on the plate. Otherwise, you got to look at your situation and say, hey, I decree and I declare some things. I prophesy to this mountain. I prophesy to this and I prophesy to the, my bank account and I prophesy to my family. Amen. Amen. See, you got to touch your knees. You got to put something on the plate. You got to speak. Are you getting anything yet? Well, we, 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 we ain't even got down to the nowhere close yet. <laughs> See, there's some things you just got to pray out. Huh? See, so he wants you to access it, amen? Access it. How are we going to access it? You got to speak it. You got to pray it out. Amen. Where did I leave off? 13? These things we also speak in, in not in words which man's wisdom teaches. Whoa. But which the Holy Spirit teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. These things we also speak. Say we also speak. Not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the Holy Spirit teaches. Say he wants to teach you something. He wants to reveal the mystery. The eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of a man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. See, he's got some things prepared for you that he wants to unlock. Verse 14, but the natural man... But the natural, natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Say the natural man. <laughs> That's your soulish realm. It will not receive the things of God. For they are foolish to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritual discern. They are spiritual discern. Say they're spiritual discern. There are some things that Apostle Nathan has to dis the spiritual discern. 
in this church. There's a difference in knowing something and discerning spiritual things. In other words, you can know this, but if someone comes in here, let me break it down this way. He has to discern some things real quick because he doesn't know. Amen. He comes in and says, wait a minute, I discerned something. This ain't right. What is he doing? He hits it right away. I discerned that this man that just walked in, the Lord just spoke to me to give him $100. See, that's discerning. Knowing something will only take you so far, but when I tap into the Spirit of God and discern something, it takes me way beyond that. So the natural man doesn't know the spiritual things of God. Amen? <laughs> but the natural man does not receive the things of God, for they are foolish to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritual discerners, because they are diff different uh, discerning, spiritual discerning, spiritual discerning. He, he, him, nor can he know them. See, there's some things that just like I said, I want to drive this home for me. There's some things you, you, you know, but then there's some things you need to discern. Amen. Are you with me? That's part of unlocking the wisdom of God and the mystery of God. Amen. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. Verse 16, for he who... for who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the what? For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the what? The mind of Christ. Say, so get the mind of Christ. Get the mind of Christ. So when I spiritually discern something, I got inside information. Hmm? Are you with me? So when I spiritually discern something, I got inside information. Is that not right? Is that not right? That's different than knowing something. Let me read 15 and 16 again. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet himself is rightly judged by no one. For he who knows the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. But God, go back to verse 10, but God has revealed them to us through his spirit. Huh? For the spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God. That we have the mind of Christ, but now, as we... <laughs> you, 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 yeah, I know. You see it. Uh, I, 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 I'm just in the glory here just for a minute. And, and, and so when he, to have the mind of Christ, you know, when we pray in the Holy Ghost, we get the mind of Christ because what he's doing, he's just, it's, like a, it's like a projector going from here to here. It goes, have you seen them old projectors? And all of a sudden, oh, I get a, I'm praying in the Holy Ghost. Oh, I just got a picture. Oh, by the way, I hear the name Tina. Anybody know Tina? There are too many people in here tonight. And this morning, <laughs> Tina. See, I hear the name Tina. <laughs> See, he wants to unlock it, but you got to speak it. Amen. Amen. See, he's going to unlock what? Let's go back up and read it again because I want you to get it. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery. Say, we speak it in a mystery. In a mystery, the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. It's for your glory. It's for your reason. It's for you. Amen. The mystery is for you. The wisdom's for you. Because the eye has not seen. Amen. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. That's how He's going to reveal it. Through the Spirit. Not through your intellect. Are you with me? And when He unlocks it, it's all glory. It's for your glory, He said. It's for your glory. Amen. But he is spiritual, judges, all, judges yet himself is rightly judged by no one. For he who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him, but we have the mind of Christ. And so when he unlocks things, we're going to have our minds going to be more heavenly minded through the Spirit. Amen. 
It gets your mind lined up with your spirit, man, because you're like, whoa, my God, I've never seen that before. In other words, I've never seen this in the Word before. Are you with me? Huh? And so when, when the hidden thing is for you, say it's for you, and it'll be for your glory, and when He accesses it, it will take you places you've never been before. That's what I just put, just a note there. Amen. So I have inside information that nobody else has when I discern. It's like walking in somewhere when he unlocks things in you inside and, and you've been praying in the Holy Ghost and I walk into a, a job site somewhere and someone's trying to get something done and they don't know how to get it done. You can go to the boss and say, this is, how, this is, this is what I hear. Amen. I've been in places in, 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 in between a rock and a hard place, and I just back up praying the Holy Ghost. He said, this is how you handle it. See, that's discerning. I know how to handle this, but I know, but I don't know. Give me discernment on how to really handle it. It's like Apostle Nathan. If he's up here preaching and someone comes in and wants to do something to the church, he's got to discern it. He, all of a sudden, he has the Holy Spirit. He's discerning. Oh, wait a minute. So-and-so back there is doing something he shouldn't be doing. You see? Knowing versus discerning. Wisdom, you got to speak. You got to speak the wisdom. He says you got to speak the wisdom. And it's for your glory, and it unlocks the mystery. Are you with me? Is that, is that good enough? So how is it going to get unlocked? Praying in the Holy Ghost, the wisdom of God will be unlocked in you because when He come to live within you, He brought ancient things with Him. And He wants to unlock the ancient resources. And the only way they'll ever get unlocked is that you pray it out. And now I got wisdom. And now the mystery of wisdom is, is unlocking the mystery because I got wisdom. And now the mystery is unlocked of the kingdom of what God really is wanting to show and do in my life. But not only in my life, but shows me how to get to a new level. And when I get to the new level, now I can bring other people to the level that I'm at. Are you with me? Say your mind won't get you there. Can we talk about the mind for a minute? Huh? <clears throat> is this all right? It says for your glory. Understand, guys, and I know you understand this in this church because there's some heavy preaching that goes on and teaching, but understand when the Holy Ghost came, the glory came with it, the kingdom of God came with it, and everything you need is in you. Your destiny is in you. Quit looking around because destiny is in you. Amen. Purpose is in you. God wants to unlock mystery. He wants to unlock the wisdom. But you can only get it when you speak it. And when you speak it, then He unlocks the mystery. Now i got the mind of Christ more. Now my mind's coming in proper alignment with heaven because now i got the understanding of what's going on. Amen. I'm really going to mess you up here in a minute. Uh, are you ready? For a good reason. Remember I said when I started, let's talk about the mind a little bit. I want to talk about the mind and the spirit. Say we're swimming, we're fixing to go swimming heavy again, just a little bit. Remember I said Adam and Eve had lost their mind? Well, they did. Huh? Your mind don't know where you need to go. But your spirit man does. Mind, say mind. Spirit. I know I can teach this here because it's deep. Watch this. Your mind is in time. 
Say, my mind's in time. But my spirit, man, is in eternity. You see why you got to pray it out. You got to speak it. And then he unlocks the wisdom. Huh? Is it, are you, yeah, you're now the, the bog of wax is coming together a little bit, huh? It's unclogging a little bit, huh? Whew. Say the mind is in time. And your mind can't take you to your destiny. But your spirit, man, is eternity. Because when you when you were <laughs> when you were born, God put eternity in you. But now listen, look, watch this. But when you got saved, the Holy Ghost came and He's eternity. And now when He taps into your spirit, huh? Now He shows you where you need to go. So, in other words, what God does, He paints a picture. Because He foreknew you before the foundation. Of the world. Wait a minute. He knew me before your mom and daddy got together. Before your mom and daddy got together drinking soda together, God already knew who you were. Huh? Think about that now. You, the, before the foundation of the world was born, he foreknew you. He already knew who you were. He already knew your destiny because he painted the picture. So what's that look like? Okay, I'm in the earth, and he looks down in the earth. I'm going to get back to that in just a minute. I'm just a side note here. And he looks down into the earth. I'm going to, I'm going to paint a picture clearly to you. He looks down into the earth. Watch this. And he sees you. He says, wait a minute. That's not in the picture. Does he change his mind? No. You know what he does? I got to get him back into the picture that I drew in heaven before the foundations of the world. So he sends Apostle Nathan and Pastor Cindy to this region because I got to get him back into the picture that I painted before the foundations of the world. Are you with me? So faithful life is here. He's in this region because he had to get some of you back into the picture that he drew. Is this making any sense? But your mind wants to take you out of the picture. Because your mind, your mind don't know where you're going. And that's the reason. That's the reason Jesus didn't come to, play, to, to, to preach church. He come preaching kingdom. Because he wanted you to think on kingdom terms. Oh, well, where am I? The mind versus the spirit. So the picture that he painted, I got to get them back in it. So I sent Apostle Nathan from San Antonio and Cynthia here. Oh, yeah, hell was breaking loose for them. But they got here because they needed to get you back into the picture that he painted before the foundations of the world. Are you with me? Go to Ecclesiastes 3. <laughs> Say your mind can't get you there, but your spirit can. Oh, the church needs this, Jesus. Uh, are you getting anything? I told you I come locked and loaded. Now I'm releasing. Your mind will touch your name and say, your mind will get you off track. Because of many who are led by the Spirit are sons of God. Are we in Ecclesiastes? Lord, help me. <laughs> Ecclesiastes 3 it talks about everything has its time right huh yeah. it said everything has its season and time and every purpose under heaven right yeah. go to verse 11 
He has made everything beautiful in its time. And also he has put eternity (laughs) in their hearts. Except that no one can find out the work that God does from the beginning to the end. (laughs) I love it. But he has what? But he has everything, he has made everything beautiful in its time. Say time. How many know that if you're not in timing with God, things can get pretty ugly in time? Say in time. Things can get real ugly if you're not in step with God in time. He has a time and a season for everything. There was a time for this church to be planted here. If it came before then, it could have got ugly. Because things can go real south in time real quick. Say, real quick. <laughs> Give him a hand clap for a minute. <laughs> I'm kind of searching over my, my notes here. I don't want to bring everything out at, right here, but. Say, my mind knows the beginning and the end. But my spirit knows no end. Let me say that again. My mind knows the beginning and the end. We get up in the mornings, we know when we're going to go to bed. But your spirit knows no end. Because it's eternity. So God works from, we work from the beginning to the end, and God works from the end to the beginning. It's fixing to get heavy. I just want you to meditate on that for a second. I'm going slow for a reason. I want you, uh, I just see some of you think, the wheels are turning. <laughs> Are you understanding this? If you don't, tell me and we'll back up. Say, my mind knows the beginning to the end, but my spirit knows no end. Your mind is in time and your spirit is outside of time. So when Jesus says it's finished, in heaven it was already done. It's done been played out. What's been played out? <laughs> your life your life has been played out already remember I said he painted the picture he foreknew you before the foundations of the earth and so now we're walking it out in the earth but it's already done faith for life church is already done in the heavens because he never starts anything that he don't end Say, it never starts anything that it's, ain't already, it's already in. So whatever he started in you, he'll finish. <laughs> Are you getting anything? Because it's already done. Because when Jesus ascended on high, he said, it's finished. What's finished? What he did in the earth. But when Father God painted, He foreknew you for the foundation of the world, He already planned your life out. And now you're down here walking it out. But it's already done. In other words, this church is already done. It's done deal in heaven. Y'all just walking it. We're just walking it out. He's already seen the hundreds of people that's going to be here. He's already seen the extension on the ministry that's already, that it's already done. Because He never starts anything that He don't finish. Drive that home. Amen. (laughs) That's the reason he's got to unlock the mystery. So you can go towards your destiny. Because right now you don't, your mind thinks you know where you're going. 
but your spirit really knows. Give him a hand clap. <clears throat> Say it's been played out. Go to 15, verse 15. That which has already been and what is to be has already been. <laughs> and God requires an account of what is past. Let me read it again. That which has already been, say it's already been, and what is to be has already been. So in other words, when you're walking your destiny out in the earth, it's already done. He's already went into your tomorrow. So what are you worried about? He's already got plan for this church. It's already done. It's, it's a done deal. He's down there looking at you. Oh, they're walking. Apostle Nathan and Pastor Cindy, they're walking it out. Just like I told them to. According to the plan. How do we stay in, in step with God? To be in step with God, you got to be out of step with man. I'm throwing something in on the table. You need to grab some of this. To be in step with God, you got to be out of step with man sometime. Now, that doesn't mean you're out of step with your pastor or anything like that. But there are some folk the enemy would send to your life that will get you out of step and your mind will go bonkers and it gets you off track. And God says, that's not in the picture I planted. So I got to get Apostle Nathan to call him up or someone in the leader of this church call him up and jerk their chain to get him back into the picture I planned in heaven already. Now it's up to them. They can cut themselves out of the picture. And many people do. Amen. Give him a hand clap. <laughs> Say he's already been into my tomorrow. <laughs> Go to Isaiah 46. Y'all want some more? Say so your mind don't know how to, get, how to get you there. You say it's in time. But your spirit is eternal. It holds the keys to the kingdom. And when I pray, the wisdom of God is revealed... And when the wisdom of God is revealed, the mystery is revealed. Because the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard. What God has planned for you. Are you with me? Woo. Watch this. Can y'all give me another, about another 30 minutes here? Is that okay, Apostle? 46, let's just go to 9. Remember the former things of old, for I'm God. Say, so he's, he's God. And there is no other. And I'm God, and there is none like me. Say, so he's in a class by himself. There ain't nobody else like him. Touch your name and say, he's in a class by himself. Understand that. There ain't but one. And he's in that class by himself. That's how big he is. <laughs> That's how big he is. <laughs> Say he's in class by himself. But he declares the end from the beginning. And from ancient times. <laughs> things that are not yet done. Say they're not yet done. But when I pray in the Holy Ghost. And the wisdom of God is revealed. The mystery comes with it. Now the ancient times can be unlocked. And now the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard what he has planned for me. You see how it ties together? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a deep thing. Amen. 
Say, I'm going to come put something on the plate. Put another log on the fire. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and it will, and I will do all my pleasures. How is he going to do them? Say he's going to do them through you. <laughs> all his pleasures. And you're going to have fun doing it. See, the religious devils of this day don't want you to understand all this. The religious people of the day that's around here, even right now, these churches that's locked down and capped down in religion, just doing churchy things. Amen. They, the, the devil is keeping them dumb to this. But see, God's the reason. That's the reason Faithful Life Church is here. And I'm not saying Faithful Life Church is the only church in this area. There's other churches around, but this one in this region, I, I don't know too many other ones. I'm just going to go ahead and say it. That is moving in the river that y'all moving in and the revelation you're moving in. There's a reason for that. See, it's kingdom business. It's about the king. And it's about his people. <laughs> Give him a hand clap. Ooh. Okay. Isaiah 46, 9 and 10. Read that. Read 10 again. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasures. Say, all my pleasures. See, we look at life from the beginning to the end. He looks at it from the end to the beginning. (laughs) Look, touch, touch your neighbor this morning, today, this afternoon, and say, I'm so glad he's went into my tomorrow. And he knows where I'm going. And all I got to do is follow. Because he's already been there. Say, he's already been there. So... <laughs> So he looks at his people, he looks at Faithful Life Church, he already sees who you are. Because he's already been there. So what did he tell Peter? What did he tell Simon before he came Peter? He says, Simon, you're Peter. What, what, was, what, 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 what was Jesus saying? <laughs> I already see you as Peter. Even though in the earth he was Simon, huh? And Jesus looks and said, you're Peter. Why could he say that? Because he'd already been there. Are you seeing? And so he looks at Faith for Life. He said, hey, I see that big church down there. <laughs> I've seen all them drug people coming in. I've already been there. And we talk to God like he hasn't been there. Like he doesn't know what's going on. That's right, Apostle Nathan. And we talk to him that way. And he just grins and loves on you like they don't even have a clue. That's the reason you got to put something on the plate. That's the reason you got to pray in the Holy Ghost so he can unlock the wisdom. For the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard, what he wants to show you because he's trying to get you somewhere. He's trying to get you to your purpose and your destiny. And along the way, there will be some curveballs. But let me tell you something, church. As you stay hooked into the flow of God, when the, when the curveball comes, you'll just kick it to the left and kick it to the right and move right on. Amen. Why? It's because you're not moving by your intellect. You're moving by the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God is leading you. Amen. I've had religious people, who does he think he is? See, that's how they think. They don't know who they are, and they're, re- they're full of rejection on top of it. And so when someone, a man of God, comes along the way and tries to, tries to, to, to pour into them, they don't receive it because they get, they get jealous. They're full of rejection. Amen. 
I like this man of God because he's, he's swimming in a deep river. And I, you know what? I like to get around people that's going places. I'm not, going, I'm not wasting any more time with people that ain't going anywhere. Nor did Jesus. <laughs> Give him a hand clap. So he looks at Peter. He say, Peter. At that time he was saying, he said, Peter, you're Peter. He said, for pulling this rock, I'll build my church. <laughs> the rock of his revelation. Saying, heaven is already finished. So in the, in the earth, you're walking it out. Apostle Paul said, God, who began a work in you, will fulfill it. It's faithful, it's faithful to finish it. That's kind of a statement Apostle Paul made. He said, the God who began a work in you is faithful to finish it. That's what he said. Why could Paul say them things? Because he knew who his God was. Amen. Say, if he started it, it's already finished. So what am I saying? Your life's already... In heaven, it's already finished. And you're just walking it out. Say, my mind's outside of time. And my spirit's eternal. So if he started healing your family, he'll finish it. Say that again. If he started healing your family, he'll finish it. Because he never starts anything that he doesn't finish. If he started healing your finances, he'll finish it. If he started building this church, he's going to finish it. Come on. I said he'll finish it. You know why he's going to finish it? Because he's got somebody stirring it the right way. And he's got somebody who's listening to the Spirit of God and not his intellect. That's just why any, ain't anybody can come up in here and preach. Because the man of God said, ah, uh, no, nah, we don't need that. Because why? He's led by the Spirit. Because this, you've got to understand, you're on a, remember I started this out, this teaching out this morning, today that this church is on a mandate. Oh. And God has said, it's already finished, baby. You're just walking it out. And I put Apostle Nathan and Pastor Cindy and the leaders in this church to walk it out to finish it. What I've already started and finished. In heaven. Oh. Give him a hand clap. I hear you, Lord. Said the eye has not seen, the ear has not heard. See, it's already heard. He's already did it up there, and now he's about to unlock the mystery. That's why the true prophets are coming forward. What did they do? They unlock people. Don't think it's strange that this teaching didn't come this weekend and another man of God's coming. Oh, I have a... The Lord, I would say this, the Lord has a word this weekend. We're just scratching the surface. Can we give him a hand clap? Have any questions? Have any questions? Say the eye has not seen. The ear has not heard. What the things God has ordained for you. I'm just paraphrasing it there. And so, but you have to speak it. You have to speak it. How are we going to speak it? I'm not going to leave you hanging. You got to speak it through the Spirit. Shut up, And it unlocks your destiny. 
70 reasons why we should pray in the Holy Ghost. See, my mind's outside of time. It knows the beginning and the end. But my spirit, man, is eternal. Draw that home. When you got when God made you, He put your spirit, He put your spirit. And but when you give your life to Jesus, the Holy Ghost came, and that communicates with your spirit. And then it sends a slide projector, a picture to your mind. And now I have a picture of what daddy's doing. And now I can see where I'm going because now my eyes are open. (laughs) Lord, we thank you. We thank you for this. I thank you for this opportunity. I thank you because you got a people that want to go deep. They don't want to pat a cake around no longer. They have destiny in them. They have purpose. And Lord, they want to move quicker to their destiny. And Lord, you even said you would shorten the times. And Lord, I think you're beginning to do that some. And I thank you that you're unlocking the ancient, ancient, ancient mysteries to us we have part of it but Lord you got other people that's got the rest and I thank you for it Lord I give you praise for it and I give you glory for it I honor you Lord all glory goes to you in this house Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. If you want me to pray with you, I'll come up and I'll pray with you. If you want that. I keep hearing the name Tina. I don't know. Maybe it's for tonight. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For your glory. For your glory. For your glory. But do anything, God, for your glory. Pour out your glory. Your glory. Father, your glory. Father, your glory, pour out your glory, your glory, your glory, Father, your glory. For your glory, your glory, Father, your glory, your glory. glory 
Father, you glow. Father, you glow. Understanding. Thank you. Thank you for healing and wholeness. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your glory. Oh, thank you for your glory, Lord. Thank you for your glory that you are opening up and revealing so that we may walk in our glory. That glory that you're bestowing upon our lives that we may uh, accomplish and do that that you've already projected in our spirit. Father, we thank you. Thank you that we can walk in the Spirit, walk by the Spirit. That that you've projected in our spirit, man, is being revealed into our hearts and minds and understanding so we can do and accomplish 
by your glory. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Thank you for your glory. Thank you, glory. Thank you for the glory of the Lord that is upon our lives today. Thank you. Thank you for more, 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 more understanding, more revelation, more, more insight. Thank you for more. Thank you for opening up more and more and more. Lord God, that we're no longer hindered or held back, Father. That time will be uh, uh, compressed. That time will be compressed in our life. And what would take years would take days. What would take days will take hours. But on that that you want to pour out and do uh, uh, on, on your people and with your people, oh God, that the glory of the Lord would come upon them and they would carry what you said in your word, our glory. The glory that you're giving to us. Oh, that glory. The same glory. The same wonderful glory you gave to Adam and Eve when you created them and designed them and you breathed life into them. Same glory. That that they rejected God, we, we, we say we, we want it. That that they let go off of them, Father, let it fall on us. Oh, my. Let us learn from them and say, no, Satan, we will not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but we shall eat of the tree of life where the glory of God dwells. Glory. Oh, yes, Lord. We will not slip into tradition and we will not slip into religion, but we'll stay in the glory. Hallelujah. And we shall accomplish that you called us to do. We shall see it shall have it we 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 know it already in the name of jesus in the name of shout amen. amen awesome are y'all ready for the night now <laughs> hallelujah fired up glory to god well go grab you some food don't go to sleep come back at seven we're gonna have an awesome night tonight amen we love you we bless you